Hey everybody, good morning and welcome to our Lake Point Junior High online family experience. My name is Pastor Ethan and I'm so excited you are participating online today. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like this fall season is flying by. I mean, it's November already. And November means it's basically Christmas. In fact, there are 55 days until December 25th, Christmas Day. That's less than eight weeks. And speaking of Christmas, here at Lake Point, we've had our Operation Christmas Child shoeboxes available for a few weeks now. And so if you haven't already, you and your family can fill a shoebox with toys, school supplies and self-care items for a child somewhere around the world who wouldn't be getting any Christmas presents this year. These children are also going to hear about Jesus and how much he loves them. So feel free to stop by Lake Point to pick up a shoebox. Just make sure you return to the church no later than Sunday, November 15th. Or check out SamaritansPurse.ca to pack a box online this year if that works better for you and your family. This Christmas, let's make sure it's a merry one for kids around the world by filling up a shoebox. So again, either pop into the church to pick up a box or head to SamaritansPurse.ca. All right, let me tell you what you can expect for today's family interactive experience. You're about to experience some friendly family competition. We're going to head into week two of our series called It's Personal. And then we're gonna to end today with some family discussion. Now, before we get into all of that amazingness, I would love if you would take the next 60 seconds to fill out our online connection card. You can find it right on the main page of the Lake Point app. And what I love about the connection card is it serves as Lake Point's guest book. And so whether you're watching for the first time today or you've been watching for a while, we would love for you to sign our guest book this morning. It's also a great way for us to stay connected and it provides you with an opportunity to sign up and see our current and upcoming campaigns and initiatives here at the church. So let's take the next 60 seconds and fill out the form together. In three, two, one. Thanks for completing the connection card and signing our guest book. Now, because Christmas is just around the corner, I thought I'd kick today off with some Christmas trivia. So for today's competition, stretch your brains, do some mind exercises, because we're about to see who's the trivia master in your family. All right, we're about to see who is the smartest in your family when it comes to random Christmas facts. In a moment, I'm gonna put some questions up on the screen. You'll have 10 seconds to pick an answer and then we're gonna move on to the next question after revealing the answer. Each question is worth 10 points. The family member who has the most amount of points at the end of our trivia questions is going to win the title of Super Genius Christmas Trivia Master. 
All right, I hope you're ready because here we go with question number one. All right, congrats to your family's super genius Christmas trivia master. Now, take a few minutes to capture a photo of you and your family participating today and post it in our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group for the chance to win a prize. The prize this week is a Tim Hortons gift card for students. And for the parents, we have an incredible parenting resource that helps optimize the time we spend with our kids. So go take the photo and then post it in our Facebook group and then jump back to the video as we move into our teaching series called It's Personal. we're going to learn about something that Jesus displayed for us with a guy named Zacchaeus. We're going to discover that our relationship with Jesus is personal because he knows what matters to us. And we're going to hear about a story in our teaching video where, where Trey, he tells us about something that really mattered to him when he was younger. So it got me thinking, what mattered to me when I was 12 or 13 years old? Well, I was into something super cool, super awesome, like the most amazing thing you could ever think of. Well, that's what I thought anyway. You see, I was into something called night crawlers. Now, if you don't know what night crawlers are, you're probably thinking, oh yeah, that definitely sounds like the most amazing thing in the world. 
but just hold on to that thought. You see, night crawlers are large worms. They can measure up to 25 centimeters in length and one centimeter in diameter. Like that's a huge worm. And so what I would do is I would stay up really late at night and I would head out to our garden and search for night crawlers. You see, night crawlers come out at night because the cool air keeps them nice and cool and damp. And that's what they actually need to be able to breathe because they actually breathe through their skin. And so I would head out and, and sometimes catch hundreds of night crawlers at a time. And then I'd store them in margarine containers for when I would go fishing. And at the time, finding night crawlers mattered so much to me. It was personal for me. Maybe you have something that's personal to you. Something that really matters. Well, keep that thing in mind as we head into week two of our series titled, It's Personal. So, when I was in school, I was really into something super cool, super awesome, and super interesting. Well, at least I thought so. I remember this game that I had, it was called Nintendo 64. And I thought it was the dopest, most amazing game that ever existed. I got it for Christmas, and I was talking about it to all of my friends, until I realized nobody else was really into it. See, because you probably don't know the Nintendo 64. This was long before Nintendo Switch and all the things that you guys know about, but it was a gaming console, and it was the best. But then I realized that everybody else didn't really like Nintendo 64 because they had Sega Genesis, which was the competitor, and apparently it was the cooler one to have. Now at the time, it mattered so much to me. It was personal for me. And because it was personal for me, I thought it was personal for everybody. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you thought everyone still cared about hoverboards or fidget spinners or rainbow looms as much as you do. But your dreams were crushed when you realized that most people had moved on from those trends years ago. Now whatever it is, we all have stuff that matters to us. Things that are, are personal to us. And a lot of times we show what matters to us to the people around us. Here's what I mean. I'm really into this camp called Big Stuff Camps. Uh, I've worked there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm so into it, I'm wearing a shirt that tells everyone how much I love it. Pretty cool, right? Or, or what about, well, let me just show you, hold on. So, I love bacon, right? Like, this is a great one. And sometimes you have a little bit of a snacks in it because you eat all the bacon, that's me. I don't know about you. Maybe you've had that problem before. Also, I love tacos. Is anybody with me on that? I'm sure you are. What else do we have in here? Can't say that I'm all the way into the periodic table, but I might wear this shirt periodically. See what I did there? Oh, now this one is really cool. If you've ever been to the state of Texas, there's a place called Bucky's, right? Bucky's is like this ridiculous, large, like convenience store on the side of the interstate. You drive down and it seems like it's for miles that this thing lands. Like it's, it's like 40 gas pumps and you go inside and they've got every single food that you can think of. It's amazing. You should try it sometime. And then of course, there's pie, because who doesn't love pie? And as I mentioned, Nintendo 64, go even further back from that. I used to love playing Atari. Enduro is a racing game. I had so much fun playing that game. All these shirts tell people how much I love these things. I mean, it means so much to me. I just want to announce to everyone how much I love them. Now I bet right now, if you looked around at each other, you'd find a couple of things that matter to your friends too. Now these are things that we care about as individuals. Things like video games, or, or fashion, or sports, or music, animals, maybe photography, or fishing, or, or TikTok, or dance, or dancing on TikTok. And we all also have personal values that matter to us. Things like being kind, or getting good grades, having a ton of friends, making people laugh, or even following Jesus and going to church. And because we're so interested in that thing, or believe so strongly that what we value is important, it's easy to think it matters to other people as well. We feel that if it's important for us, it means it's important for others. If we care about something, that means that other people probably care about it too, right? Or maybe, even if we know other people don't really care about the things we care about, 
We still think we know what they care about. Someone at school, your new neighbor, the girl on your team, the boy in your group. You don't really know them, but you think you do. You think you have them all figured out, even though you really haven't taken the time to get to know them personally. Listen, here's the truth. We all do this. I mean, think about it. I bet you can all picture someone in your life right now that you think you have figured out. You think you know who they are and what they're into and what they're like. You think you understand what matters to them and, and what they care about. And you've probably thought those things based only on assumptions or observations from a distance. You don't really know what matters to them, but you think you do. And that's because, like we said, it can be easy to think we have people figured out. It can be really easy to feel like we know people personally, even when we don't. And while that may not seem like that big of a deal, I think it actually has the potential to impact both others and ourselves in some not so great ways. Now, for starters, we tend to only hang out with people who we think are like us. People who care about what we care about. And that means we leave out or avoid or exclude people who we think are not like us. Not only do we miss out on people who might bring great things into our lives, but sometimes we also hurt them, whether we mean to or not. Or these assumptions we make about ourselves and others makes us feel like maybe we're the ones who don't fit in. We feel stuck and lonely and misunderstood. We feel like nobody understands what really matters to us. Like nobody really knows us on a personal level. And that's why I love what Jesus did in the story of Zacchaeus. Jesus didn't make assumptions. Jesus made it personal by truly understanding what mattered to Zacchaeus. Now, before we get too far into Zacchaeus' story, let me give you some background on what was happening at the time. Jesus was becoming extremely popular. So more and more people were starting to follow him. He had fulfilled prophecies, he'd worked miracles, and some of his sermons pretty much went viral. It's safe to say that people thought Jesus was a pretty big deal. In this story we're about to read, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem and had just entered a city called Jericho. Now the crowd in Jericho was so excited to see Jesus that they welcomed him with palm branches and shouts of Hosanna, which is basically a term used to celebrate and express joy back then. It'd be like us going like whoop whoop. Like can you imagine that Jesus walks in and you're like whoop whoop, what's up Jesus, right? Like it was here that Jesus had his last recorded personal encounter before he died on the cross. And that encounter, was with Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus wasn't someone you'd expect Jesus to personally connect with. In fact, I'd say it was probably the opposite. See, Zacchaeus didn't have the best reputation. He was a chief tax collector, which meant that he had to collect taxes, just take money from the citizens on behalf of Rome. Now, the problem was that tax collectors at this time were known to be uh, dishonest and untrustworthy. Most people thought they were greedy thieves, so that's how most people viewed Zacchaeus. Now, if anyone could have made the argument, I don't really have time for you, it probably would have been Jesus in this moment. But instead, a different story took place. It says this, he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Now, based on how the crowd viewed Zacchaeus, I bet what Jesus did surprised everyone. But Jesus saw something about Zacchaeus that the crowd didn't. The crowd saw someone who greedily took more money than he should have. The crowd saw someone who kept all the nice things for himself. The crowd had every reason to assume that what mattered to Zacchaeus was money and wealth. But Jesus saw a grown man who had run ahead of the crowd to climb a tree. Jesus saw someone who was so interested in meeting the rumored savior that he didn't care what his reputation was or what assumptions people made about him. Jesus saw a man desperately interested in finding hope. Zacchaeus wanted hope so desperately, he climbed a tree just to get a glimpse of a guy he heard might be able to give it to him. The people thought they knew all about Zacchaeus. 
To them, he was nothing more than a greedy, sinful traitor. The exact opposite of the kind of person Jesus should have noticed, let alone asked to hang out with. Jesus knew what Zacchaeus did for a job and what people thought about him. But Jesus didn't let assumptions tell him who Zacchaeus was personally or what really mattered to him. Jesus made his interaction with Zacchaeus personal because Jesus knew what mattered to him. And the truth is this, Jesus does the same for us. See, it's, it's personal because Jesus knows what matters to you. Jesus sees more than what everybody else sees. Jesus sees into the very heart of all of us. He looks past all the outward things like reputations and assumptions. So the next time you wonder if anybody cares about what you care about, the next time you feel alone or misunderstood or just out there on your own, think about Jesus. Think about how he knows you in a personal way. Someone who knows your world and knows what matters to you who cares about the real you, not the one that everyone thinks they know. Remember, it's personal because Jesus knows what matters to you. So, what can we take from this? How can we learn from Jesus' example? Well, I think there are basically two things we can do to make it personal, one for ourselves and one for others. First, we can make it personal for ourselves by talking to Jesus about what matters to us. Jesus cares about every single thing you care about. So tell Jesus what matters to you. Pray about it, write it down. Jesus wants us to talk to him about anything and everything, just like we would with our best friend. And the more we talk to him about the things that matter to us, the more connection we'll feel with him, the more personal he'll become. Now, maybe you're thinking, I don't really know what matters to me yet. I have some interests and some things I care about, but are they things that really matter to me? If that's you, I totally get that. Honestly, that's normal. We're all constantly learning and figure out what matters to us. And one of the best ways you can keep discovering that is by talking to Jesus about it. And second, we can make it personal with others. Now in his encounter with Zacchaeus, Jesus demonstrated what he wants you and I to do for the people in our lives as well. To look past our assumptions and what we think we know about each other and what matters to us. To make it personal. To take the time to get to know other people and discover what matters to them. So how do we do this? We just need to be intentional about getting to know someone. We need to look beyond what we think matters to them and even beyond what matters to us. And instead, we can actually get to know more about who they are by taking an interest in their interests. Start with one person who you think you already know things about or someone you may have never taken the time to get to know personally. Talk to them. Ask them about what matters to them and then pay attention to what they say. Take an interest in other people and you just might be surprised to find that you have more in common than you thought. You may find that you've made a personal connection where there wasn't one before. Remember, it's personal because Jesus knows what matters to you. And because of that, he wants you to make it personal by discovering more about what matters to yourself and someone else. Your group is a great place to do just that. It's a perfect place where you can learn about what matters to others and show them you truly care about who they are as a person. It's a place to share what matters to you most and to let them get to know you in return. So now as you go to your groups, here's a question I want you to think about. What's one thing that matters to me? This week's video really hits home for me, mostly because of what I talked about earlier about the night crawlers. You see, people thought I was crazy for catching these worms in the middle of the night. And I just assumed it was normal and what everyone did, but most people didn't do it. Everyone thought I was crazy and weird. And I know this sounds really silly, but I'm so glad that Jesus sees more than what everybody else sees. He looks past assumptions and opinions that others have formed about us. Jesus knows us in a personal way and he knows what matters to us and he truly cares about those things. Jesus cares that I loved finding night crawlers. And so what Jesus displayed for Zacchaeus 
And what Jesus displays for you and I, that he knows what matters to us and that he makes it personal, we can do the same for him and others. We can make it personal for ourselves by, by talking to Jesus about what matters to us. See, the more we talk to him, the more personal our relationship will him. You see, the more we talk to him, the more personal our relationship with him will become. And we can make it personal with others by looking past our assumptions and getting to know people and what matters to them. It's personal because, because Jesus knows what matters to you. And because of that, he wants to make it personal for you too. So what's one thing that matters to you? And who's one person who you can listen and learn more about what matters to them? Let's talk about it today during our discussion time. Parents, this is where we're gonna turn things over to you. In a moment, you'll see some questions on your screen. And so grab the remote and press pause for as long as you need to to create meaningful discussion around the questions. Remember that these questions are just a guide, so feel free to rephrase them in a way that engages your student best. After you've had a meaningful discussion, press play and join me for some closing thoughts. Thanks for a great week at junior high, everyone. Remember to post in our junior high Facebook group your photo of your family participating today for the chance to win a prize. Just head to Facebook, search Lake Point Junior High and request to join the group. If you aren't on Facebook, you can just email me your photo to ethan at lakepoint.church and I'll make sure that you get added into the draw. Now to close our time today, Take the next two minutes and pray together as a family and then head to the Lake Point app to access our weekday devotionals and you can find those in the family resources section. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time at Junior High Online.